Hi everyone, thanks for jumping on our session today. Uh, we will start in just a moment while everyone gets on, on board, but uh, yeah, thanks again for, um, for logging on. Just while we're waiting for everyone to log on, um, can uh, someone just type in the, the chat box that uh, that you can you can hear me correct and it's all coming through loud and clear? Great. I think we might um, uh, we might make a, a start. So thank you everyone for joining today's uh, webinar. Uh, hopefully you're all here for the um, uh, the latest Proof Points uh, All Stars webinar. Um, today we'll be running through uh, the security awareness training uh, from Proof Point. Um, this is number three of our uh, Proof Point All Stars. Uh, enablement training webinars. Uh, so we're very, very excited to be up to, to number number three. Um, if we can just move on to the uh, the next slide, that would be great. Uh, as I mentioned, we're up to number we're up to number three uh, today, which we're going to be running through security awareness training. Uh, the previous couple we've done uh, was. Uh, was on uh, the people-centric starting point, so an overview of, uh, of, of proof point, and then the last one a few weeks ago was uh, was around the uh, proof point essentials bundles. Um, if anyone wants or didn't wasn't able to attend any of those and wants any information, please reach out. We've got recording of those uh, as well, and then we've got our last one coming up in in December, which is all around uh, around email security. Uh, the Proofpoint All Stars program. We're very excited here at Ingram Micro to be working with Proofpoint to bring these uh, to you. Um, our program here is is designed to be twofold. One, it's uh, a training enablement program. Uh, so we do that through a series of, of resources, including uh, this series of, uh, of webinars. Um, but we also do it as a as a, a rewards and incentive program uh, as well. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a series of four, so we're definitely going to be sending out details after uh, the webinar and keen to get everyone's, uh, everyone's feedback. Uh, but while we're doing the presentation today, uh, please feel free to, uh, to type any questions that you have in the, in the question box as we, um, as we progress. Um, as I mentioned, it is uh, the, the All Stars program is uh, an incentive program as well. Um, so for any partners that uh, are uh, as part of our, our Pro League, uh, as part of attending this session today, you do get 15,000 uh, points allocated uh, to you for, for, for this. Um, but we also have uh, open for every partners uh, deal registration program as well. So uh, anyone that uh, that has some opportunities for um, uh, for Proofpoint uh, can register those through uh, through this program and and uh, be up for some some rewards. As part of this presentation today and as part of this session, we also do have some some extra extra goodies. Uh, we are running a, a Kahoot uh, quiz at the end of the uh, session, so definitely definitely stick around. 
Um, if anyone has not not that familiar with with Kahoot, um, you can actually download the the app from uh, from app stores, or you can actually log into it uh, directly through uh, through the web. So um, uh, if you don't and want to have a quick look, go and have a look at the app stores for um, for it. Uh, and as I mentioned before, there are some some great rewards with regards to this this program. Um, if anyone's not familiar with um, with with the process, it's uh, I am All Stars uh, as the the address. But we will definitely be sending out uh, some details uh, around that uh, after. If we can go back one slide, please. Um, I'm Daniel Vickers from Ingram Micro. I'm a Cloud Security Relationship Manager uh, here at Ingram Micro. And today we're lucky enough to, um, uh, to have two presenters from, uh, from Proofpoint, uh, Marash and, and Andrew, to, to run through um, uh, security awareness training uh, today. Uh, and just quick flip on to the, the next slide, just in terms of the, the Kahoot that we were, I was talking about, there are some great prizes uh, up for grabs, including um, some Proofpoint merchandise, as well as a, a basketball um, uh, All-Stars pack uh, as well. So that's enough from me. Uh, uh, without further ado, I might hand it over to uh, the team at, uh, at Proofpoint to, uh, to get us started today. Uh, Marash, uh, where you go. Thanks, Dan. I um, appreciate the um, introduction uh, to the team and uh, welcome everyone. Um, really great to have you all uh, join us for the third webinar session we're organizing with um, Ingram Micro. As Dan mentioned, uh, this session is all about uh, security awareness training. I'm sure if you've been working with customers uh, these days, uh, this topic is very much front of mind and it's been heavily discussed across, especially with everyone working from home and people doing their own things and got access to everything within their business. Um, so we've, we've seen PSAT grow drastically for us in the past two years. Um, and we put, if you look at our product portfolio, PSAT's been actually one of our fastest selling product as well. On top of that is one of those products where it has the shortest sales life cycle to try and get it into a customer. So if you're looking at positioning a product and starting and finishing the project by Christmas, uh, PSAT is the way to go. So with that note, I'll uh, pass it on to Andrew, who will uh, take us through, who's our specialist on this product and take us through the session today. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Marash. Um, thank you, Dan. Appreciate the, um, uh, the introductions. Um, on we go. So, um, so uh, I'm just going to turn my video off uh, right now that we've said hello. Okay, so what we're looking at today is, so to start off with PSAT, it stands for uh, Proofpoint Security Awareness Training. SAT or Security Awareness Training is a, a, a fairly commonly used acronym. Uh, so when we serve to PSAT, it's uh, Proofpoint Security Awareness Training. Um, we are looking today, how do you identify opportunities, um, the sales play. So there's three key ones which usually make sense for us, and I'll run you through what those are, um, why they why they work and why they resonate with customers. Uh, a little bit on the, the competition uh, and uh, also Q&A as well. So um, uh, if, if you have any questions, please do type them in the box uh, and we will address them at the end. If there's anything urgent, um, uh, the, the team will um, interrupt me as we go through. Otherwise, we'll, I'll cover those off at the end um, after the code. Um, but please do pay attention. The answers to most of the code questions are in this presentation. So, um, and a little bit about me. Um, I've been with Proofpoint now for over three years since Proofpoint bought the original um, solution, which was uh, previously known as Wombat Security. Okay. Look, just to put a bit of context around, um, you know, why, why sell um, the, the PSAP product? Uh, as Marash said, it has this, you know, it's not a, it's not a heavy technical sell. Um, it is every organization needs to have something in place. And it typically, it typically has the shortest sales cycle um, of the, the products that we sell. I mean, I just wanted to throw up some, some numbers around uh, some of the sales that we did, that I did in Q3, uh, without complicating it too much, just to give you a bit of an idea. 
So this is sales price. This is without um, kind of Disney Channel uh, margins on top. So this is uh, th this is the, the quotes that go to you. So in the commercial end, um, I did a deal for 600 users, which was uh, just over 6,000 US dollars. Um, in mid, mid enterprise, um, uh, almost three times the amount of users. So you can see it was $27,000. However, $12,000 of that was part of the PSAT enterprise. Uh, PSAT enterprise is what we call it. Uh, and, but we also sold a managed service on top of that as well. So there's a couple of options. You can use, you can sell PSAT's managed service, which I'll come to. You can also offer your own, um, you know, if you want to, uh, if you have the capacity to deliver security and awareness programs uh, to advise customers to send phishing simulations. And in the enterprise space, again, another deal, um, uh, selling the PSAT with that managed service. So when it comes to, to um, uh, the, the PSAT products, uh, it's very much, we only have two options. One is called Enterprise, which has everything on the platform. Um, and uh, we, if you're selling a P1 bundle, um, which is our core kind of product, so the, enter, so the, the gateway, uh, so proof point protection server, with targeted attack protection and uh, traps, a threat response auto call, then PSAT Enterprise goes with that P1 bundle. Uh, now we do have a slightly cut down version called the standard package, which is about 70% of the cost uh, and you lose um, some, some of the content within that. But we really just sell on Enterprise because it, it really suits most customers. Okay, so first off, how do we kind of qualify um, who we're talking to? So this is a slide that um, I'm happy to share, and it starts off the conversation nicely around um, where an organization is. So as I said before, you know, um, depending on what the um, um, what area the customer's in, whether financial services or healthcare or, or small business, there are um, reg regulations, there are recommendations around uh, the level of security awareness that they need to have. Um, very rarely do we find someone who's got nothing at all, but um, you know, it does still sometimes happen. Now, some customers or prospects you'll speak to might have something from a compliance point of view. Maybe there is a module that um, they ask people to do on a, a yearly basis, so a yearly training, um, or when they start an organization, they do a mandatory training to, to make sure that they're compliant. Maybe a customer will do a phishing simulation once a year, again, just to say that they've done it. Most of the customers we speak to are around the awareness. So they're probably, they're doing the compliance piece, but they are either sending out uh, awareness emails, maybe putting posters around, maybe doing a bit more training and getting more towards that awareness piece. Uh, the next kind of stage we'd suggest would be behavioral change. Now, if you're looking to change behavior, the big difference between creating awareness by um, sending emails, putting posters up, um, offering training is being able to measure and being able to track a difference in behavioral change. And this is typically done in, a, in a, a few ways. So one's being from a phishing simulation, being able to um, track the number of users that fall for a fish. So you send out a phishing simulation and anybody who falls for that, you, you record that so you can understand who that is. We find the much better measure is to use the fish alarm button so our service comes with an add-in. And so when an end user sees something, a suspicious email in their inbox, they have a reporting button and that uh, reports back to the um, training platform to let people, let, let the administrators know that they have seen and spotted that email. So tracking that behavior is really key. And some more mature organizations, uh, the, the cultural piece, is really um, ensuring that the um, uh, security awareness training is part of the conversation. So there are 
you know, there, there, are, there are trainings, not just from a compliance point of view, there are conversations being had. We would really encourage customers not just to do it um, uh, via a service like ours, but you would need champions, you know, carrying those messages within an organization, as well as um, sophisticated training across broad topics, um, uh, you know, reporting button, phishing simulations, uh, and ways of really interacting with end users. Okay. Um, next up. Okay, so this is um, this is quite a busy slide, um, uh, and but this is really the important one. So, um, if you're going to if you're going to pay attention to anything in the next kind of you know 20 30 minutes or so, this is probably the slide. So, for the business outcomes for Proofpoint Security Awareness Training, so PSANS, um, what we're trying to do is the following: reduce risk, change behaviour, reduce exposure. And improve invisibility. So I'll go through them one at a time. So reducing risk in users. So this is done by a number of ways, but we need to identify where the risk is and then put things in place to reduce that risk. Sounds really simple and to be fair it is quite straightforward. But when we're talking about identifying vulnerable users, phishing simulations, I'm sure you all understand what that is, we have a, um, a questionnaire tool, but we also have a really good integration with our um, email gateway solution in which we can identify who vulnerable users are, uh, which I'll come to on the, next, um, on the next slide. So being able to educate the people who are either risky through their behavior, because they click on phishing simulations or they don't do training, uh, or because they're being attacked by cyber criminals, gives you the opportunity to actually act on that risk. Changing behavior. So we have a wide variety of content um, to be able to, to make a difference. Um, Gartner calls it out, as do um, other um, um, commentators, that the industry and the users are very much calling out for micro learnings. So shorter and shorter pieces of training that deal with one, um, one topic at a time. And so rather than doing a one training once a year for half an hour or, or, or an hour's worth of content, it's much better and much more effective to give end users two or three minutes worth of training once a month and maybe some slightly larger ones. But having that variety and having more corporate content which you can uh, customize or funny you know humorous content that um that really is going to engage people and to teach them the concepts as well as the compliance based uh, uh, content is really key so reducing exposure so again i mentioned the the, the service comes with a an add-in which, which sits in um your your email so whether it's Outlook, Office 365, or G Suite, so the end user can use a reporting button. Now, most services have a reporting button. You know, um, even Google, you know, Microsoft have got a, a reporting button. But it's really, what does that button do? Now, the proof point button, if somebody uses it, will push that reported email, if it's not a phishing simulation, through our full email gateway for further analysis and potentially automated remediation. Now, some of our competitors do something similar to this, but no one autom automates it, and no one pushes it through uh, a full um, scan of a, uh, you know, a, a leading email gateway. So it's a, that's a big point of reducing the exposure by enabling um, incident response teams to, to act on those things. And the last piece here is um, visibility. So this, um, the, sorry, there's a spelling error there. This should be the CISO dashboard at CISO. So the CISO dashboard is the, the main reporting page, uh, which allows end users, sorry, administrators, to be able to understand, you know, where they are in terms of, you know, if they are, if the programs are going the right way. Uh, and to be able to report up to board level and deliver 
on the program that they've suggested. Um, so being able to deliver on this, reducing exposure, so you're reducing also the workload for the SOC team and the IR team. So rather than having them spend a lot of time looking at uh, an abuse inbox to be able to manually look at and remediate um, um, potential risky emails. The threat intelligence, so again, reducing that risk. Through points threat intelligence, we have a, uh, an outstanding conversion rate uh, or attachment rate of the security awareness training to customers who have our email gateway, which again, I'll come to, but having the intelligence to know who is being attacked with what really makes a difference. And finally, you know, services to change behavior. We've got a couple of options and we really, we do, uh, we do suggest most organizations look at a managed service. Now, we sell, we sell a, a managed service from Proofpoint. Uh, as I've mentioned in a previous slide, uh, you know, that comes at a cost, which obviously kind of would benefit you. However, if as an organization, you offer your own managed service, to deliver the platform, so to be an admin for the for the PSAP platform, uh, to send phishing simulations, to enroll people in training, and to deliver reporting, um, that's a great option as well, and a way that you can also make money, but also, importantly, support a customer and make sure that they have a successful program. Um, uh, the one thing we do find, we really push them out of service, either through a channel partner like yourselves or, or, or through ours, because otherwise end users, so organizations will buy the service, but they'll run out of time to create and send the phishing simulations. Uh, or someone who's the admin on the portal will move roles or move organizations, and all of a sudden no one knows how to do it, and um, it becomes shelf shelfware. So a managed service is really key. Okay. Um, we're going to look at sales plays next. Um, look, uh, if there are any questions and somebody wants to interrupt me as we go, uh, please do do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll just save them for the end because uh, I can't see them popping up. Okay, we've got three mail set, um, uh, main sales plays. The integration with Proofpoint, uh, the, the quality and customization of the training, uh, and also the ability uh, to sell a managed service. Um, so let's get straight in. So first off, integration with Proofpoint. Now, because you have been through the some of the training uh, for Proofpoint already, um, you've got a good idea of the uh, the, the gateway service. Uh, a key part of that is our tap dashboard. So understanding who is being attacked with what, uh, and there is a key element. So uh, from your VAP, so you can see here, you've got your attack index, and for a customer, we know who is being attacked and who is at the top of that list, and also what they're being attacked with. Um, as well as that, you also have the top clickers. So when we are rewriting US um, URLs, if they're being delivered um, and let, but later deemed to be malicious, and end users are actually clicking on those rewritten URLs, and you know the quality of the email suggests that they really shouldn't be clicking on something that looks that dodgy, we also know who they are. So what we've developed is there's an API that goes from the training platform, sorry, that goes from the TAP dashboard, um, our targeted attack protection, through to the, the training platform. So those two groups, your very attack people and your top clickers, we can understand what types of threat they're being targeted with, and we can enroll them into the specific training modules, some of which I'll come to, to guard them against that. So when we talked about um, uh, reducing risk, your very attacked people are risky because you know cyber criminals like them more than other people in the organization. Your top clickers are risky by their behavior because they will click on anything. But understanding who they are and what they're clicking on, you can offer them um, uh, training based on what it is that they're doing. So this is based on a customer's environment, which is really, really powerful. 
Um, so really important to be able to, to, to do that. Um, now, as part of that, uh, this is just a, a quick snapshot um, without taking you into the full um, People Risk 360. But we have a dashboard, and what that does is it looks at the um, all people within an organization, and it overlays three things. So you've got a set of data, which is the very attacked people from the TAP dashboard. We have the very privileged people. Uh, so let's say your organization is um, has got an AD thing to get the your end users into the TAP dashboard. Um, that can also identify from the AD um, people's roles, so you can understand if they are VIPs, whether they work in the, the IT team, the finance team, uh, whether they're you know part of the executive. So we can understand whether they've got a higher level of access to you know be able to move money or to log into systems, you know to be able to to you know so they're more of a risk of who they are. And you can also overlay the very vulnerable vulnerable people. So those individuals who are falling for phishing simulations or who are not engaging with the training or uh, are doing badly in their training. So those groups of people, so rather than um, training all of the people all of the time, you can understand the people who are not very good at training, but if they happen to be privileged through, through their access or have a higher level of uh, attack surface because the uh, cyber criminals are after them then they fall into um, you know the, the, the target groups so you can specifically uh, as we saw on the previous slide enroll those people into uh, the, the, the appropriate content so again a way of understanding the people risk within an organization again don't train everyone train the people who are risky because you know of they're being attacked because they've got privilege or they are not very good at spotting threats and they're not engaging in training content and so this is a free dashboard uh, that comes if you have the um the tap dashboard our, our gateway email filtering and the uh, the training um, platform as well Okay, so um, thinking about those integrations, you know, um, the, the, the fish alarm button is really important. Uh, and so when you're sending phishing simulations, you want to let people know that, um, uh, you want to let people know, you know, what's happened uh, and get them to understand that they're going to be sent phishing simulations so they can use the fish alarm button. And so if you're sending phishing simulations out and you fall for one, you'll see uh, a message like this, which is what we call the teachable moment. So a teachable moment will pop up telling them, and that's one of those micro learnings. So in the moment learnings, where someone has the opportunity to see a page like this, to see the preview of the tool, uh, oops, you've fallen for a fish, and you can uh, immediately think, ah, oh, I know what I've done, um, and I, I shouldn't have done it. Okay. Um, Next couple of slides are a little bit more technical, um, but um, it's important because um, when we're talking to people who are in um, in um, email in the security, they really kind of this is one of the key benefits for them around that um, uh, reducing exposure piece. So a key differentiator for us. So. The, the, the phishing, uh, the PSAP platform comes with an add-in we call Fish Alarm. So this sits in your email uh, inbox uh, or on your mobile phone, Outlook, um, Office 365, even G Suite. So an email is delivered via um, a gateway, any gateway, doesn't matter. You don't need this, you don't need the proof point gateway for this to work. And the if the um, user thinks that that uh, email looks suspicious, they will click the fish alarm button and report that email. Now, if it is a simulation, they'll get a pop-up message saying, 
Um, congratulations, thank you for spotting the fishing simulation. You know, your, your actions are helping keep us safe. Now, if it's not a, um, um, if it's not a simulation, if it is a potential threat, we will do the following. Uh, so we will send that through an API call to um, send it through our complete proof point threat intelligence. So even if the end user, even if a customer is not a, a gateway customer, um, the proof point protection server, our targeted attack protection, they will get the full analysis as if that email was sent through our email gateway. And we will send a, a what we call a threat report overview to the, um, the SOC team or the incident response team or the help desk, wherever it's pointed. And so we will do that analysis. The headers in the um, body will be attached to, to that threat report overview, and it will come through as one of six dispositions. So it says here, likely a fish. Uh, it could be likely a fish, um, um, a suspicious, uh, bulk, uh, unlikely a fish, um, spam, uh, or, or one other, which escapes me right now. But the, the point being, is that if somebody's re reported a, a bulk email, so they're just reporting their Coles or their Woolworths point up update because they don't want it anymore, your incident response team, you know, will come through with a green label saying, um, you know, a bulk mail. So you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to um, understand what that is. But if it is a, a potential threat, or we suggest it needs a manual review, your team can jump on that straight away having the analysis done for them already. Now, when we talked about integrations earlier, um, the, the other key integration, taking that one step further, sorry, I seem to have um, added something onto that page. No. Um, so apologies, um, agenda for training, I've, I've pasted there, I shouldn't have done. Um, so the extra integration is with the trap um, uh, a, a mail abuse box. So TRAP stands for Threat Response Auto Pull, and this is, sits on a, a virtual machine or in AWS. And uh, again, steps one and two are part of the training platform. The button and that first analysis. If there is a use case where the uh, customer gets, gets a lot of reported emails, and they don't want somebody to man a, uh, a box, uh, sorry, an inbox. Threat response auto pull is that auto remediation. So, as emails scored as malicious, for any emails that are scored as malicious, Trap can automatically locate them and pull all other instances of that malicious email across the organization. Um, and it can also be set to automatically close bulk or low risk mails. But what it will also do is it will send feedback to the end user. So when I report a message, not only does it tell me whether I've reported a phishing simulation or a potential threat, a couple of minutes later, I will receive an email back to me saying, hi, Andrew, thank you for reporting that email. However, it appears to be a bulk mail. Please try unsubscribing and blocking the sender or congratulations, you've spotted a, a malicious email you know, thank you for keeping us safe. Uh, so very useful tool, uh, and we often sell those two together. All right, so um, those, those were the integrations. Um, the next sales play is the quality of the training. So um, if we're talking to people who are, are more kind of um, uh, L&D or HR based uh, and looking for lots of content. Um, the tool isn't just about the integrations with uh, the Proofpoint platform. Sorry, the other Proofpoint technologies. We started off uh, as an organization over 15 years ago. And, you know, uh, if you read any of the, the Gartner, Forrester Wave, style reports on security awareness training, um, you know, we, we, we lead the way. Um, an awful lot of um, energy and investment is, sp is spent in making sure that this is the best training tool it can possibly be, as well as the integrations. 
Now, something we've recently rolled out, which I won't take you through in much detail, but we call it the adaptive learning framework. And basically what this is, is all of the content we have maps to one of four different levels, basic, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, across all of what we would call the com com control domains. So if you're adhering to NIST or um, ISO 27000 or uh, Essential 8, you might talk about the domain. So password and authentications, insider threat, secure developer. So, um, and also with this content, what we've done is we've produced a full set of training across all, all of these. Um, and I've got these reading the wrong way around. And I'm thrilled to say that for uh, all of the, the new um, micro learning content covering each one of those areas, it is um, they're being translated. You see here it says 41. So 41 languages we translate those two in written text, but also, and this is the exciting thing, in voiceover. And so within voiceover, uh, for all of these micro learnings, so you can see the security basics, either data handling and security, email and social engineering, we have an Australian voiceover to go with that content. A lot of the feedback we get is around, um, you know, we don't like the American accent or the British accent, uh, and it's not localized. So um, within about a month or so, um, the, the rest of the translations will be done. And you know, we have um, over 300 modules um, and 40 of those micro uh, learnings, the full set uh, across those risk domains of those levels will all have uh, an Australian voiceover, which we're really pleased about. Where we're going with the content strategy, uh, and I didn't want to spend too much time, you know, in the, the platform today looking at that content. Um, you know, if you're keen to see the content, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure we can set you up some, uh, some access at a later date. But as I say, we've got over 300 modules. We've got over 500 awareness assets. So posters, screensavers, um, uh, newsletters, uh, to, to be able to, to, to change um, uh, to change behavior. Um, and where we're going is um, for individual learning paths. So um, again, looking at an end user, let's say you've said there's a group of your users that are at beginner level. Uh, so one up from basic, but at a beginner level, and you want them to be trained on say six of those domains. So maybe email, you know, passwords, insider threats, mobile devices, etc. You can enroll them through, you're sorry, you will be able to enroll them. This is where we're going um, for, for next year. You will be able to enroll them. Uh, and um, the end game is we set them at a level and give them those areas. And so the end user will actually be able to choose the type of training they want to see. Because so some end users want to want a funny video. Some end users want to, to read content. Some users want something that's um, um, interactive and gamified. So really, um, that's where we're heading. We're very, very excited about the content that we have. Um, one of the other key bits of content which really sets us apart, uh, we have a series called the Attack Spotlight. Uh, now, we produce one of these every month, uh, if not more. What we do is we look at the different types of threats that we see uh, coming from bad actors and we create short uh, kind of minute and a half videos explaining what those threats are. So rather than just doing some generic training on phishing, you know, don't click on you know, um, suspicious links, we've got specific training. And if you can remember uh, the, the threats that we, we talked about coming from the, the tap dashboard, when we identify that there is a VAP or top clicker that is clicking on uh, certain types of, of emails, uh, then we can enroll them into the appropriate email to say, um, hi, Andrew, we've enrolled you in a, a short training because bad actors, uh, you know, cyber criminals, are targeting you with this type of content. 
reporting is really key for us. Uh, so, you know, if you've seen any of the other products from Proofpoint, you know, the data is very important so we can uh, take action on it. Uh, and this one is what we call the, the CISO dashboard and some, just some screenshots of the reporting. The idea being is that we want to be able to benchmark you against uh, your, your industry uh, and to, to put the different uh, features of the training tool into an index so uh, a CISO can understand it and a CISO or, or someone within the team can happily go and have the conversation with the board at board level to say, look, this is where we are, this, this is where we're going. And there's also integrations there from the TAP dashboard. So again, the, the low performers and low participators overlapped with the um, uh, with your, your very attack people from the TAP dashboard. Okay, uh, last little bit. I think I might only have a couple of slides left for Kahoot. Uh, so last off, managed service. We mentioned at the beginning, why is it important? Look, rolling out a, um, uh, uh, a training uh, program is um, something that you really do need help with. Uh, so ideally, an organization, let's say it's driven by the security awareness, so, sorry, the IT security team, Ideally, and again, if you read any of the, the Gartner or the Forrester Wave commentary, they do call out to say successful programs need help from um, other parts of the business. You need your, um, you need executive support, you need help from uh, HR, uh, L&D, from marketing to be able to really um, get the message out around what is really, a, it's a training program, you know, it should, I'm always surprised that there's, there's not more um, interaction with L&D to, to roll this out. If you don't have that support, or you don't, if this, you know, it's not available, uh, what we often find is that IT security teams, you know, fall down on pushing the content down. So what we do with the managed service is the following. So we take all of the thinking out of uh, designing a program, you know, we've got 15 years worth of experience here. We can tell you what works, what, uh, what works by our industry, and we can develop and set in uh, play a, uh, a program which matches your goals. What you get when you buy a managed service, our managed service, uh, and hopefully yours, uh, is that you guarantee results. So if you say, I want a monthly phishing simulation to be sent on my behalf, and I want um, every two months, I want everybody enrolled into a five minute training module to increase awareness over time. We guarantee that we will deliver that and we can get up and running much quicker because uh, even though it's quite a simple platform, somebody does still need to understand how it works and to, to, to put the time and effort in. And as I said at the beginning, we do have some successful partners that have learned the tool uh, and basically deliver um, the, 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 the tool, the content, the phishing simulations on behalf of the customer. Oh, my apologies. One last thing, um, uh, competitors. So these often come up. So um, I picked out the, the kind of three that we see most. Just a point on each. So no before are probably the best known. Um, and um, look, they have lots of content. Their strategy over the years has been to buy small companies um, with their user bases and also lots of content. So they've got a couple of thousand uh, modules. The problem with that is how do you actually pick which ones to use and roll out a, uh, a coherent program? Uh, it looks quite good um, in terms of the, the interact dashboards, uh, but they, they fail to measure a few things, I'd argue. Uh, and they have a very aggressive and big sales team. I was told the other day, I think in APJ, they've got a sales team of about 45 people um, just selling this. Uh, and so we often find them in customers um, because they've, they've got such a broad, broad spread. Mimecast is a customer of our uh, competitive hours from the gateway point of view. They have a, a set of videos uh, a set of funny videos with a US accent. Um, there's no customization. 
there's uh, the, there's there's not a lot of options there. You either you know you just use what they give you. Um, we don't see them as a, a serious competitor from a training point of view, and it's also often given away free. Uh, we also come across Friendly Fishing. Now, Friendly Fishing is an Australian-based organisation. Uh, it's quite cost-effective. Um, it's and they ha they have a, an automated offering which they sets up uh, and uh, Australian content. Now, it, it lacks Thread Insight because they they have no relation to uh, an email gateway uh, and integrations, and um, uh, it probably lacks a bit of the, the the variety and depth. But this is probably the biggest competitor that we have because uh, it works. You know, they're a they're a good organisation, so I get worried when we come up against these guys. But again. If people are interested in that threat site, threat insight, integration, automations, and a bit more depth, then um, that's a, a concern. Okay, um, so I'm going to hand over to Dorothy now, uh, and then um, let's see. And then if there's any questions at the end. Thank you so much, Andrew. That is okay. I'm trying to attend it. Uh. So whilst we oh, wait just, for... Just a reminder. Yep, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Daniel. Dorothy. I was just going to okay. say, yeah, while we're, while we're getting set up, Definitely, please remember to put any questions you have in the in the question box, and we can um, we can answer those uh, after the Kahoot quiz. All right, perfect. Um, and um, before we start the Kahoot, I just want to um, I just wanted to say that if you would like to um, join and play the Kahoot, um, please make sure that you uh, that you type up Kahoot.it to join online, or also um, if you've got the app ready to go, um, we'll get started shortly. Um, for those that are joining, um, if you could please include your your first name so that it's easier for us to distinguish who the winners are. Um, once again. The winners will receive, so for the first prize it will be an All-Stars kit um, and for the second and third prize you will receive um, some merchandise. So um, we've got the game pin ready to go, so it is 3609601. Awesome and we've got some pretty keen players, so I hope that you are all, you are all listening to the webinar. Um, all up, we've got seven questions in total. So we've got five questions which are relevant to the webinar, um, which uh, Andrew went through. And we've got um, two general knowledge questions, um, which I've placed in the first and the last um, set of questions for this Kahoot. And I'll just give you all a couple more seconds, um, just so that we don't leave anyone behind. Um, and uh, one more thing that I wanted to mention is this game is a game of speed if you haven't played Kahoot. So even if you get the responses, uh, the answers wrong and you um, respond quickly, you still get points for it. So um, it could be any, anyone's, anyone's uh, game at this point. Um, and maybe two more seconds and I'll start. I'm just being mindful of the time. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna kick start now. Um, good luck everyone. And just another heads up, question one is a general knowledge question. Okay, question one, which Avenger is the only one who could calm the Hulk down? Is it Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, or Captain America? So we've got some pretty uh, pretty avid fans here. We've got some we've got nine responses already. Awesome. So well done to the seven of you. The answer is Black Widow. So well done to Jed C, the Zen, and Aiden. Okay, question two. 
what is the simulated fishing option called that is shown in the exhibit? Is it fish alarm, fish alarm analyzer, teachable moment, or threat sim report? So the answer is teachable moment. Oh no, so no one got it right. And the score of course remains the same. So good luck everyone for question three. What is the name of the PSAT suite included with the P1 bundle? Is it complete suite, enterprise suite, platinum suite or anti-phishing suite? Awesome, so at least we've got five people that got it right. It is Enterprise Suite. So well done. Okay, so the podium has changed. Well done to the Zen, Aiden and Jed C. Question four, how many languages are supported in the PSAT learning module? Is it 10, 20, 25 or over 35? And the answer is over 35. Well done to the seven of you that got it right. And we've still got the, the Zen coming first. Well done to Jed C and also Aiden. Question five, what is the name of the central reporting dashboard that defines, that defines success, sorry. Is it CEO checkpoint data hub CISO dashboard. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So the six of you that got it right, well done. It is CISO dashboard. And we've still got the Zen coming first. And also well done to Jed C and Aiden. Question six. What is the name of the PSAT training series of short modules based on real life em on real life malicious emails? Is it attack spotlight, really bad emails, spotlight on attack or emails that are really bad? <laughs> awesome, so the answer is attack spotlight. And we've still got the Zen up the top. And I think this is the last question. So a general knowledge, which show is the highest grossing production on Broadway ever? Is it Wicked, Chicago, The Lion King or Miss Saigon? And their answer is The Lion King. So that could have been anyone's, anyone's, um, what do you call it? Call it could have been anyone's best bet. Um, so here we've got third place is Jed C. Well done. Second place we have The Zen. And we've got first place is Aiden. Awesome. So well done to the three of you. Um, we will keep in touch after this webinar. So um, for the winners, feel free to just comment down on the chat box and just mention that you're the winner and we'll keep in contact through you that way. Um, and now we're going to continue with any Q and A's if anyone has any. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Dorothy. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen um, any questions come through, so definitely uh, put them in if you've got some. We've got obviously the, the team from Proofpoint here, uh, the experts in security awareness training to answer any questions that, uh, that you guys might have based on uh, the presentation that, that Andrew ran through. Might wait just a, a couple of moments. Can't see any. Thanks, Dan. Maybe while we are waiting, maybe I'll just um, check with Andrew or with a generic question about, you know, um, Andrew beats customers. He yeah, sees those on a regular basis. What would be like the, the top concern across uh, CISOs with security awareness uh, training and knowledge assessments with their employees, Andrew? Yeah, good question. It, that, that is one that comes up all the time. Um, it, it depends. Um, so sometimes it is a, a case for compliance uh, of a need to do something. You know, I'm talking to a couple of customers now 
uh, that we are we're going to close deals with in the next couple of months because they have to get something done by the end of this calendar year to to meet their compliance so they have to roll out some training and they have to do a fishing simulation otherwise they're in trouble uh, and for other organizations it is um, they want to do something but there's a lack of time uh, or resources within the team uh, and often we find sadly that you know the security teams um, you don't really have the support of, of HR or, or, um, uh, or L&D learning and development uh, I'm sure that will change mm -hmm. over time but we're still on a bit of a journey there so that's why kind of the, uh, the managed service comes into it um, and uh, you know again uh, when we ask why you know where people are in the journey why they're having the conversation sometimes genuinely they've been thinking about it for a long time and something's happened so they've had uh, uh, a breach uh, or an incident you know they've lost some money something bad has happened and all of a sudden they have you know they want to have the conversation now because they now is the time to, to move the needle so yeah it's um which is you know why i went through that that piece at the beginning of where people are in the journey uh, and kind of you know why they want to have that conversation it's a good question Thanks, Andrew. That that um, makes us understand. Also shows a bit of agency as well. For um, end of the year, so if you are talking to any customers, uh, please bring up the question about uh, security awareness training and what they're doing for it, and we can definitely help. Um, as I don't see any further questions coming up, um, Dan, I'll pass it over to you to close up. Then, mate. Yeah, no, definitely. No, thank thank you both, uh, Andrew and Marash, for for today. Uh, and thank you for all of our attendees for attending uh, the session today and, and the third one of our, our All-Stars training series. Uh, as mentioned at the start, we will be sending out uh, a note afterwards and feel free uh, after we send that through if there's any questions to, to contact me or the extended Proofpoint team uh, and we can, we can go from there. Thanks again and we'll give a few minutes back into your day. Cheers. Thanks everyone. Thank you.